This is another one of my favorite labels. This is London um, from the DECA recording group in England. Um, this is what they call Phase 4. And Phase 4 was another one of those really good um, recording uh, techniques that London had, um, kind of like RCA's Red Seal. Um, some people call it the gimmick. I really wouldn't. I, I think that uh, these recordings are very good quality. The, the vinyl is very good quality as well. Um, there were about 200 that um, London put out. Some people, there are people out there that have every single one. I don't. I'd love to have that. Maybe one day I will. Um, this particular one, um, let's see what the date is at. It says here or not. I would assume this is from the late 60s, early 70s. Um, the gimmick really was that it was recorded on um, 10 channel and then later 20 channel recording consoles. Um, I really don't know if that's true or if that really matters because obviously it's on a 2 channel when it comes. Um, this actually is a review from Stereo Review Magazine. This is another one of those uh, collection uh, issues from that collection. And originally it cost what seven dollars and ninety-five cents, or no, I'm sorry, five dollars and ninety-eight cents. So, and this is from I'm not sure what date. This is probably it was probably I think in today's money maybe around twenty dollars, twenty-five dollars. Um, the inner sleeve says made in England. I'm not 100% sure if these were pressed in England. I would assume since the quality of the vinyl is much better than that of many American labels that it probably was, but I'm not 100% sure. This is also in, in near mint condition, I would say. Um, again, very good quality. So that's London Phase 4. Um, move on to the next one. The next one I'm going to do is Deutsche Grammophon, um, or German Grammophon in English. Uh, this is another one of my favorite classical record labels. The quality of vinyl on, on uh, German Grammophon is very good. Um, and this particular release got the Grand Prix, I'm not even going to pronounce that word because my French is not very good. Um, from what I understand, that was a very per, uh, precision. Well, I can't think of the word. Anyway, it was a very a very good award to have. Um, my vocabulary does not want to cooperate today, but um, it's prestigious. That's what I meant. Um, and most, uh, if not all, of the the German gramophone recordings had both English and German vibrato, and I think some of them that might be French, and some of them there are. Um, this, they're pretty collectible. Most uh, audiophiles really look for these. There is a company that are making a few reissues on newer vinyl. Uh, unfortunately, German, the actual German gramophone com company, which is still around, does not. Um, but again, very good quality vinyl. Heavyweight. Um, it's not 200 gram, but it's much better than a lot of American labels. Um, so this one's. You know, if, if you're into collecting, you know, classical records, you, I, I would assume, I would hope that you have heard of German Gramophone and that you own some of the of the issues. I have close to 25 to 30 of these, um, and usually, even on German Gramophone, I'll, I'll pick it up. Uh, this particular one I got for a dollar, which is pretty good. Uh, but that's something. This here is very common with a lot of imports, uh, if you're American imports, um, and that's because. Of, the quality of many European outer sleeves is not very good. It's very flimsy compared with a lot of the American um, versions. So this glue tends to come off, I'd say, probably 60% of my German gramophone records have this problem. And you could probably just put some some glue on there and, and it'd be fine, but it's kind of frustrating because I hate to add anything to something because I think that takes away from its originality. but. Um, so there's German gramophone. There are some older recordings. I don't know if they were on 78. They may have been, um, but um, they they're still in business. They're still 
uh, world renowned for their recordings. They record here locally with the Cleveland Orchestra, so um, there's that. We'll move on to the next one.